Hey guys, this is Peter with the Command Valley, bringing you another Commander deck tech from Kaldheim. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing it, check out the link in the description below. We have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right into their deck builder and buy your singles there. If you want to support the channel directly, head on over to Patreon at patreon.com slash command valley to sign up today for some sweet perks. Today I am going to be building a deck around Svela Ice Shaper as the commander. She's a legendary snow creature troll warrior. She costs one, a red, and a green, and she's a 2-4. She has two abilities. The first one is pay three and tap. Create a colorless snow artifact token named Icy Manolith with tap add one mana of any color. Her second ability costs six, a red and a green and tap. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may cast a spell from among them without paying its mana cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. I looked at Svela and I thought, Gruel artifacts? Why not? And I just ran with it. Svela has two functions. She makes a lot of artifacts and then she can use them to cast impactful cards from the top of our deck. So we're going for a combo strategy and it has two parts. The first part is to get infinite mana one way or another, usually with Svela if we can manage it. And the second is to use that mana to combo and win the game. With infinite mana, we can cast our entire deck, so as long as we have a strategy in there to win, then we're all set. I built this deck with the hopes that you would use it as a guideline rather than a blueprint. And what I mean by that is that there are a lot of cool artifact interactions in here that work and can be used further, but you should choose the strategy that you really resonate with when you build your deck and run with it. This is how I've decided to build the deck. The cards are generally useful in a Svela deck because a lot of them have to do with making Svela more efficient. So that's something to keep in mind as you listen to these cards that I'm including in the deck and frame it in the reference of how you want to build your Svela deck. Okay, so for our first section, we're going to talk about how to make Svela more efficient. And what I mean by that is that we want things that will make Svela do her job better. On her own, what she can do is tap to make a token artifact that we can tap for mana, so a mana rock or she can cast things from the top of our library. So we want to do things that copy that, that make it happen more often, or make it cheaper to do those things. First, let's start with Hearthstone. It reduces the cost of Svela's ability by one, so it makes it easier to make even more mana or to cast things off of the top. Then we have Illusionist Bracers, Rings of Bright Hearth, and Parallel Lives. All three of these can copy the first ability on her, and the first two of them can copy her second ability. So we make more tokens on the activation, which will give us more mana, and we can continue to activate her more. Or we could get two activations off of the top, getting uh, two spells cast for free off of the top eight cards of our library. Then we have Second Harvest. This will essentially double all of our tokens just once, essentially just giving all of our mana back basically every time we activate it. If we have a whole bunch of these artifacts available, this is going to give us a lot of value whenever we cast it. Next, we have Mage Rite Stone, Manifold Key, and Puppet Strings. These are all untap shenanigans. You can untap Svela with Mage Rite Stone and Puppet Strings, or you can untap an artifact with Manifold Key, which you can then use to untap one of these other untapping artifacts and make it more useful. So this can give us another activation off of Svela and can be useful for some of the other utility artifacts that we'll talk about later. Next, we have Seedborn Muse and Seeker of Skybreak. These are both creature untap shenanigans. Seeker of Skybreak untaps her just once, but Seedborn Muse will do it every turn, giving us extra activations every time and letting us cast more spells off the top on other people's turns, which is really nice to do. Speaking of which, the next one is Unwinding Clock, which untaps all artifacts, a lot like Seedborn Muse, except just for artifacts and it costs one less. It doesn't untap Svela, unfortunately, but it will untap things that untap Svela, which will give us more activations. Next, we have Staff of Domination, Sword of the Perunes, and Umbral Mantle. These can untap Svela infinitely if we are generating enough mana from our new tokens, whether it's creating enough to be mana positive or to have a mana doubler that we'll talk about later. And generally, it's the most useful untapping that we can do in the deck because these are repeatable. All the 
Most of the other ones either happen only once per turn or they have to tap to untap something. Next we have Rhythm of the Wild, Swift Foot Boots, and Lightning Greaves. All of these give us some protection for Svela and give Svela haste, which means that we can cast her and start activating her on other people's turns or on our own turn. And this is especially helpful late in the game when we have a whole bunch of stuff and your commander gets removed. It's gonna feel bad to wait another turn cycle to get her rolling again. Next we have Scroll Rack. This lets us cycle cards to the top of our deck to cast for free with Svela if we have some shenanigans that make it worth it for us to do that instead of just casting it from our hand. For instance, we can cast interaction or protection spells on other people's turns that we couldn't cast during our turn if we're willing to pay that extra cost of the eight to tap Svela and cast something from the top. And last we have Silver Skin Armor and Liquid Metal Coating. Both of these can change Svela to an artifact and that makes our artifact untapping shenanigans a lot more effective and it can help with more of the artifact synergies that we'll talk about later. Okay, in the next section we're going to talk about increasing our mana. This is our ramp package and it also has to do a lot with our mana doublers and other key strategies in this deck. So first up we have our standard mana rocks with arcane signet. Gruel Signet, Soul Ring, and Talisman of Impulse. We don't want anything costing three or more because in almost all cases, it's going to be more effective to just activate Svela instead. So all of our mana rocks that we're just using to get further in the game, especially towards the beginning, are one to two mana. This next one is three mana though, it's Basalt Monolith, and it's because it can easily go infinite with any sort of mana doubler or effect doubler like Rings of Bright Hearth, and then if we have things to untap Svela recursively, we can use that infinite mana that we generate with Basalt Monolith to make an infinite amount of colored mana as well, and then just cast our entire deck. So that's a key combo piece in this deck, and it is technically a mana rock for three, but it's incredibly useful and honestly shocking easy to get infinite mana off of. The last mana rock I want to mention here is one I haven't ever played before. It's Thran Turbine. Thran Turbine is an artifact for one and it says at the beginning of your upkeep you may add two colorless mana. You can't spend this mana to cast spells. So this sounds really bad in a lot of cases because that mana is going to instantly disappear as soon as you move to your draw step and so you have to spend it during your upkeep Otherwise, you're just going to lose that mana. Fortunately, in this deck, Svela is most useful for her activated abilities, which means that we can get that two mana into our mana pool and then spend it immediately along with one other mana to tap Svela and make a mana rock. So that's really nice. And it only then costs us really one mana and we're getting that mana back immediately before our turn even starts. Next we have our mana dorks with Birds of Paradise, Elvish Mystic, Finhorn Elves, and Llanowar Elves. Again, these are really useful to cast early on. Not as useful later unless we have some mass untapped shenanigans and these are helping us get even more mana. But a lot of the mana that we're generating is going to be from those icy mana lists that Svela is making. Next we have Solemn Simulacrum. If we don't have the right color fixing by the time we can cast Sol Solemn Simulacrum, then we're going to get the mana that we need and then we can cast our commander on the next turn. So that is like double synergy there. It, it helps us get a land and a card, but it also is an artifact. And so it helps us towards our other artifact goals and we can use it for fodder for some other things. Next, and probably most importantly in this section, are Mana Reflection and Nyxbloom Ancient. These are mana doublers and triplers, making all of our mana rocks extremely effective and potentially putting them in a position to make infinitely many tokens. Nyxbloom Ancient is so important to this deck that I've included three tutors that are specifically designed to find it, which are Finale of Devastation, Worldly Tutor, and Fierce Empath. 
these I'm almost always going to be looking for Nyx Bloom Ancient. There are one or two other things that I might want to grab, depending on if I have the rest of the combo pieces for those things. But Nyx Bloom Ancient is going to help us in the most situations because we're always going to be making mana rocks, and those are always going to want to be tripled. And we're almost always going to be able to cast it too because it's not hard to get to that much mana. So. Nyx Bloom Ancient is an all-star in this deck, and I've included three tutors to get it. All right, let's talk about some artifact synergies. These are just good artifact cards that are going to boost our power level for all of the artifacts on our board. Let's start with Dark Steel Forge, a nine mana artifact that makes all of our artifacts indestructible. This is absolutely insane, and it really protects our board. I mean, artifacts are already a little bit harder to deal with, and we're already going to have a ton of them, but this is going to help us from most of the cases where they could be destroyed in a widespread way. Something that I found in researching for this deck is that there are only five spells that specifically exile all artifacts, and whenever someone is doing that, they're also exiling all of their artifacts, so this can be extremely detrimental. And then, of course, there are exile or non-land permanent spells, and those are going to hurt our opponents just as much as they're going to hurt us. Dark Steel Forge is really good in this deck for that reason. Next, we have Mycosynth Lattice. It makes everything on the board an artifact, which is obviously really, really good with Dark Steel Forge. I've seen it on the board with these two together. All of your permanents are indestructible, and it's just amazing. So Mycosynth Lattice, it boosts all of our artifact synergies by making everything uh, an artifact and it's just really really good there along with that i will mention that we are playing collector elf this does lock down the board with mycosynth lattice uh, just the same as karn the great creator does by making it so all of our opponents cannot tap their lands for mana and thus can't really generate mana and thus they're basically out of the game it's not guaranteed but it's a pretty hard lock if you are wanting to go into like a super stacks heavy version of the deck this is a pretty solid strategy here i'm not super keen on that sort of strategy but i did put it in the deck just in case i needed to cast that in certain situations and I really only consider the appropriate occasion to be if I'm really far behind and I need to catch up. So that's why I included the alpha in. Next we have Planar Bridge and Koldotha Forge Master. These are both artifact tutors. So Koldotha Forge Master will find artifacts and that will have a lot of fodder with the icy mana liths. It can sacrifice a whole bunch of those and just find something. So it's basically a, a three mana artifact tutor except you can float that mana, so it's not really. And then Planar Bridge is a six mana artifact that costs eight to activate, and you can find any permanent and put it onto the battlefield just straight. So that's also amazing to get out our Nyx Bloom Ancient or any other artifact combo piece. This is just as useful as Svela, except it can find any card in our library and we don't have to cast off at the top. And last in this section, I wanted to talk about Megatog. This is a new one for me. I haven't ever played with a Megatog. Basically, if we have infinite mana rocks, then this will take one of our opponents out in the absence of anything else that we can do. If we don't have infinite rocks, we can still have something that's very pr protective and oppressive since we can keep on fueling it with artifacts that we create from Svela. All right, next up, we've got our recursion section. So because we're playing red, Artifact Recursion is one of the strongest categories that red can do. Blue is really the primary artifact strategy, and so we're missing a lot of the key elements of an artifact deck because we don't have access to blue. So we're going to play to red strengths and do recursion, and green is also very good at regrowth and recursion effects that return permanence to our hands, and we're going to take advantage of that here as well. First, I'll talk about those. We've got Balaged Recovery, Noxious Revival, and Regrowth. These are all just regrowth effects. They return a permanent from our graveyard to our hand 
And these are some of the best ones that you can find. So that's why I've included them here to get some artifacts back and do some combo tricks if we need to. Next, we've got Duretti Scrap Savant, which is just all around good with artifacts. And most of the time, you're not going to get to that ult because people know how good it is. But using that minus two ability to sacrifice an artifact and bring one back, that's going to be really useful to do every once in a while. And then next we have Goblin Welder, along those same lines, sacrificing an artifact and returning something from the graveyard in its place. So that's another recursive engine that we can have on the battlefield. All right, the next couple of things are part of a combo. And this is really the meat of the deck. This is what is going to make us win. And it's going to be one of these two cards if we can pull it off. We have other things that we can do, but these are the main strategy. And it's Blasting Station and Grinding Station. Both of these can sacrifice a creature or an artifact, or if you have an artifact creature, that's perfect. And then whenever a creature or an artifact comes back into play, then you can untap them. With infinite mana, so we have a lot of ways of making infinite mana in this deck. So if we have either Blasting Station or Grinding Station out, then all we need is a Junk Diver or a Mirror Retriever. And in some cases, a Scrap Trawler will do as well. So I put all three of those in this deck. And if I have Junk Diver and Mirror Retriever, I can cycle those over and over again by sacrificing one to the stations, doing its effect, returning the other one to my hand, casting that one because I have infinite mana, and then just repeating that cycle over and over again until we've either milled out all of our opponents or we've pinged them to death. There are other things that can make this work. We have a whole bunch of altars with Altar of Dementia, Astronaut's Altar, and Kark Clan Ironworks if you need some sort of a sack outlet. And Astronaut's Altar and Kark Clan Ironworks can be an alternate infinite mana combo if you have Junk Diver and Mirror Retriever. So that's very useful as well. We also have Memnite and Mishra's Bobble as zero mana artifacts. So if we have Scrap Trawler, then we can use these to help cycle all of our graveyard stuff. So that's the main combo in the deck. If you are able to cast your entire library, you're definitely going to have all the pieces you need to continuously tap and untap Blasting Station or Grinding Station and just win the game that way. All right, next for our interaction section. This is a little bit sparse, but that's mostly fine because it's going to be hard to deal with our board anyways. And so dealing with other people's boards is not such a high priority, but there are the cases where you do need to get rid of something. Beast Within and Chaos Warp, they're two great gruel cards. They do basically the same thing, and it's great to have both of them around. Then we have the new Tybalt's Trickery, everyone's favorite new red counterspell. In Commander, it feels much less broken in more limited formats, and sometimes it's going to burn you, of course, but other times they're going to get something that's just strictly worse straight onto the battlefield. So... I like the chaos of this card, and it's a counterspell. It's, it's, it feels a lot like Chaos Warp, honestly, but countering a spell instead of destroying a permanent, which can be more useful in a lot of situations. And last in the interaction section, I have Comet Storm. It's a great mana outlet if you have a ton of mana on your board, and it helps us get control of the board a bit if we have an opponent with an impressive attacking board towards us. All right. One final section before we get to the mana base. I just have two extra cards that didn't really fit into any other strategy, but they're pretty good in this deck. I've got Avenger of Zendikar. So the reason why I've included this is because I have seen Landon's Corval deck way too many times to know that Avenger of Zendikar is super easy to recur and cycle with a ton of mana at your disposal. So you have a lot of fodder for sack outlets and other things. This can pretty easily overwhelm the board as well. It gives you some extra protection. So it's a pretty good card all around to have in gruel colors. And we definitely have the mana to utilize it over and over again. And last, we have Idol of Oblivion. This is just a good card draw artifact because we aren't going to be having a lot of turns early on where we need this and there aren't tokens being created this will help us early game get us a lot of advantage plus with a whole bunch of artifact untapped shenanigans 
that can net us some more cards and be kind of a backup for the value we're getting on Svela if we need more mana to get to that point. All right, finally, let's get to our mana base. I've got a couple of artifact themed lands and then the rest is mostly pretty basic. First, I've got Buried Ruin. It adds to our recursion strategy for artifacts and can return something one time. We've also got Inventor's Fair, which can tutor up an artifact. Usually I use this to find Planar Bridge or something else that's going to progress our strategy quite a lot. Next, we have the three artifact lands that can go in this deck, which are Dark Steel Citadel, Great Furnace, and Tree of Tales. This, these work well with our untapped shenanigans, being untapped whenever you untap an artifact, and just in general are going to be good cards to have in an artifact deck. So those are my artifact lands. We've also got Command Tower, Evolving Wilds, Fabled Passage, and Terramorphic Expanse if we need to fix our mana. And then we've got 13 forests and 12 mountains. And that's it for my Svela deck tech. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this and want to support us directly, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley. It supports us directly. We have exclusive content coming out all the time. We just recorded a gameplay with our patrons that we're going to post on the channel in the future. So look out for that. And if you want to be a part of those, just sign up and we will put you on the list. We have a Discord. We have merch. We have other amazing perks. Just go check it out. See what's right for you. Thank you again to GameGrid for sponsoring this video and all of the videos on this channel. If you go to the link in the description, it's an affiliate link and it will help the channel if you purchase anything there. We have that deck list in the description, so if you liked a card that I displayed here, go and go buy it from GameCrit and it helps us a lot. They ship nationwide, so you can get your card singles there and shipped right to you. Trust me, they're great. If you want to stay updated with the latest Command Valley news, follow us at Command Valley P1 on Twitter and like us on Facebook. There's links in the description for all of our social medias. Until next time, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this build of Svela.